Welcome back to the Cultural Cache. Recently, a subscriber asked us to talk about how Japan changed during World War II. And I thought the best way to do that was to take a look at Keisuke Kinoshita's movie, 24 Eyes. First off, 24 Eyes is an excellent movie. It tells a really compelling story of how Japan changed during World War II. In particular, it focuses on the story of Oshi Sensei, who's a rookie female teacher. In this clip, Oshi Sensei is meeting some of her students for the first time. And as you can see, some of them have some kind of interesting reactions to her. One of the main themes in the movie is social change, and particularly the role of women in Japanese society. There's a number of ways Kinoshita tackles this subject matter. For instance, he uses material objects in the movie to represent and embody the social change that occurred in Japan during World War II. One example of this is Oshi Sensei's bicycle. Now that may sound weird at first take, but you're going to see what I mean in a minute. Despite this unwanted attention, Oshi Sensei shines as the star of Kinoshita's wartime story. She establishes a great rapport with her students, and Kinoshita spends considerable time showing the joy and the basic everyday interactions between Oshi Sensei and her students. Of note in this point of the movie is Kinoshita's grandeur and attention to detail in using these beautiful panning long shots to show the joy and simplicity of everyday life. But he also uses the same techniques to show the struggles in everyday life. Taking into context, what Kinoshita is really doing is trying to show the life of the everyday man and woman. And this is part of the reason why the movie is so popular in Japan. It shows everyday people just getting on with things. Kinoshita is making an important and purposeful point here. It's that the national identity doesn't have to be tied up with militarism. Up to this point, the movie's kind of stayed apolitical. But soon enough, Kinoshita digs in. Oshi Sensei eventually leaves the teaching profession. And one of the reasons put forth in the movie is a criticism of what is seen as her liberal teaching style. In this clip, you see her students saying goodbye to her. And this is Kinoshita's setup for the main take home of the movie. Fast forward a decade and Oshi Sensei is now the one saying goodbye to her students. This time the boys are going off to war. Kinoshita mirrors the scene that we saw earlier in the movie to great effect here. The close ups of the little boys on the shore are now close ups of young men going off to war. And Oshi Sensei is the one standing on the shore crying this time. Once again Kinoshita is saying this is the life of the everyday person. This is what we experienced during the war. And he asked the question, do we really want to go through this again? Another question that's put forth is, what is the role of women in Japanese society? You sit there watching the movie thinking, why didn't they listen to Oshi Sensei? You're forced to think, what, if any role, did women have in making these decisions? Especially given they suffered the consequences of them too. In this final goodbye scene, Kinoshita mirrors, almost frame by frame, what we saw earlier.
Fast forward another few years, and the outcome is Oshi Sensei mourning her students. This scene would have been not too unfamiliar for Japanese audiences, and wouldn't have been easy to watch, but it also makes it necessary viewing. After a 10 year grace period, Kinoshita obviously saw it as time to start discussing these issues, and for the nation to mourn, heal, and get over their pre-war identity. In the final scene, we see Oshi Sensei and that bicycle being overtaken. To me, this represents the great change that happened over the course of the war in Japan, and really sends home the main themes of the movie. This is a movie for and about everyday people. In particular, the women and children that were affected by the war, and how things changed over that 16 year period. What's more is that it's a celebration of liberalism and humanism, and really a great, great movie. We're going to leave you here to watch the final scene. Thanks for watching today. Take care.